So a few days ago, uh, I was talking with uh, Michael Levin, the developmental biologist, and uh, you know how we think about and relate to our machines was our topic. I have tended to want to distinguish between organisms and machines because I think organisms have you know, abilities and uh, a nature that is distinct from from machines. Uh, organisms are alive, for example. Um, organisms have an internal purposiveness and sentience and capacity to make creative decisions from moment to moment that, you know, spring from some kind of interior sense-making capacity whereas machines you know they're programmed from the outside right um they don't have their own purposes they have the purposes of their designers imposed upon the matter of which they are made and um you know that's a that's a distinction that i think is important to remember to keep in mind and yet you know i agree with uh mike levin that machines are becoming increasingly intelligent and that there is probably something like a spectrum or continuum of intelligence that includes machines at the bottom and um You know, human beings and perhaps other intelligent alien species uh, above that. And who knows where this series of spheres of intelligence uh, ultimately terminates. Um, which leads to all sorts of inter interesting questions. But, you know, when we think about our relationship to our machines, right, there is something about even, you know, intelligent machines that run on kind of AI that I think uh, gives us reason to, to be skeptical um, of, their, of their abilities, right? Because machines don't really evolve, even if they're machine learning algorithms and like they've learned certain behaviors, um, you know, in the short, relatively short term. Um, when you talk about an organism that has evolved, you're, you're talking about something that's been embedded in, you know, a structural, a process of structural coupling with a, a whole historical series of environments on this planet over the course of billions of years. So a lot of, you know, tricks have been picked up along the way, a lot of memory of um, how to be in sync with the rhythms of this planet has been acquired over that long, you know, multi-billion year process. Whereas, you know, any, any machine that is, you know, at least initially designed and built by human beings, even if it does begin to learn uh, through neural nets and whatever about how to interact with specific environments and, and uh, you know, with language or, or um, whatever, it's, it's still, it's going to lack that depth of memory, right? Because it, it hasn't been evolving as long as any biological organism will have been evolving. So it's less historically embedded in this environment, which you know, we call Earth. And so that might give us reason to suspect, you know, that our machines, intelligent though they be, they might be particularly blind to rather important features of the Earth environment that we as organisms are just more constitutively prepared for, right? And so we would expect machines to, even the most intelligent machines, to make really stupid mistakes because, you know, they just never encountered that before. They haven't been around long enough to have encountered that before. Um, they make other mistakes that you would expect the designers to have, you know, been able to account for. But in any event, you know, we're being challenged with questions like this. You know, is there an ultimate difference between an organism and a machine? No, not an ultimate difference, but I think a significant difference. Um, you know, a difference in degree that is so great it might approach something like a difference in kind.
behind. Not really, but it, it, for all intents and purposes, you know. Now, you know, the broader question about our relationship to, to technology, though, is, is important also to keep in mind because it's a very difficult problem to think about, you know, because our technologies, they shape our ability to think at all, right? And so for us to try to think about technology, we're always going to be in some sense blind to the material and, and, and formal ways in which it is granting us that very capacity, right? It's like an eye trying to see itself, the mind trying to think itself, because our minds have always been intimately bound up with our tools. You know, from the moment we started to fashion stone implements, um, and certainly when we started metallurgy and, you know, then uh, developed writing, the alphabet, the printing press, you know, the telegram, the the radio, television, and then of course the internet, and now, you know, artificial intelligence. And so, what's going on here? How are we to understand the human being independently of the way our minds have been augmented and our bodies by these various technologies over the years, right? We've always been co-evolving with these with these machines and so when we ask the question like oh is will it be conscious will one of these the descendants of the large of the large language models that are currently you know on the market and continuing to be developed will they ever be conscious and it's like well have we ever been conscious without being in some kind of symbiotic relationship with a, an artifact, a technology of some kind. I don't think so. I mean, you know, you could say, well, what, what we think of as peculiar to human beings, at least, that kind of consciousness has never existed without technology. Certainly there are animal forms of consciousness or sentience that pre-exist our species, right? But uh, there's something about, you know, self-conscious, self-reflective intelligence, such as that form of intelligence which would, you know, make machines in the first place, that does seem to distinguish our species. Again, not like we're totally different in kind, we're still animals, but we have this new degree of capacity to transform our environment and to engage in a kind of symbolic reflection that makes us almost different in kind. So, how are we to, you know, imagine our way forward in such a situation, given that, you know, we can't simply say yes or no to technology any more than we could say yes or no to our own nature as human beings. It's more a matter of becoming more conscious of, of our relationships to these machines, you know, and admitting that we are already cyborgs. This isn't a future we may one day face, it is a present reality. And so how does that change our conception of what it means to be a human being, you know? How does it change our conception of a machine? These are both important questions.